the smooth object commands to help make some of our objects um, a little bit softer and smoother to give it a little bit more realism so everything is not as clunky as um, we have it here. So on the screen, I have some uh, objects that I just modeled, some basic objects. And we're going to use this smooth object command that you see here in the ribbon. Now, if you don't see this, it's probably because you're in the wrong uh, workspace. And to change the workspace, just go down to the bottom right corner and click on workspace and you will change that to 3d modeling and you should be able to change the ribbon to look like this and you should see here the smooth object command if i apply the smooth object command by just clicking on smooth up smooth objects and selecting an object like this here hit enter it will ask me if i want to create a mesh because i can only smooth a mesh so i need to convert these solids to a mesh if i want to do that every single time I can just click this and it won't ask me again, um, but I'll leave that on just as a reminder and I will click create mesh. Once I do that, you can see that that object now becomes a little bit smoother. The corners become less rough. It kind of softened, right? But they look a little bit faceted, right? There's sort of an edge there. If I come back up to the smooth object, right here, the little circle at the top with the little plus symbol, that's smooth more. If I use smooth more and select the object again, it will smooth it a little bit more. If I do it one more time by clicking enter, I select the object again and hit enter. I enter the properties. Let's close that, get that out of the way. I could do smooth more and click on the object, enter, and it will smooth it even more. And I could do it up to three times and it will soften that object that there's no more sharp edges. And I could do that to a, a irregular shape polygon as well. Here's polygon, create mesh, smooth more, uh, smooth more. And again, up to three times, smooth more. And one more time and it will smoothen out that object like that, okay? Now, something else that you may want to do, you might not want this object to look as smooth as it is, right? So let me undo this and so get back to the original shape, the original blocky shape. There we go. So as I'm here, I can go up into that smooth object area and click on the little arrow where, next to where it says mesh. And that opens up the mesh tessellation option okay and we're, we're what we're going to look at is here maximum edge length for new faces i like to start off with a default number of four inches your computer may not be set up with four inches being uh the default it might be something else right if that's the case uh four is a good number to start with right or if you're you're using the smooth object and things look really weird it's probably because this number is either set too high or too little so four is a good place to start so let's let's change this to let's say zero right just so you can see what would happen if i have a, a maximum edge length of zero right so i'll click okay here and then click smooth object and select this object again to make it smooth and i hit enter again create mesh and you can see the object and the shape that is a result of that it's a very different looking object it might be what you want but if your purpose was to just round off and and soften up that original object this is very different right um i suppose i could just do a smooth more as well uh smooth more like this and it'll continue to smoothen it it's kind of a neat object but looks nothing like my original object, right? So nonetheless, it might be useful. So let me undo that to my original shape, right? So if I go back to that, that little arrow there and go back to the mesh tessellation option, I could change that to one, let's say, and click OK. Let's move the object again, select this. And now what you see, oh, create mesh. And now what you see is the same object, but now the edges are smooth, but it's not smooth. Um, the radius of the smoothness is not as 
large as it was before, right? So it still maintains a little bit of a blockiness, but it's it's smoothing out the edges a little bit, right? And again, I could mesh smooth this. Okay. And I could soften that edge as well. So let me undo that until I get back to the original shape. Right. And now again, go back to mesh oscillation and let's change this to, let's say, two. Let's see what happens. Mesh smooth, create mesh. You can see what happens now, right? Like that radius becomes a little bit larger, right? So it's getting a little bit smoother. So that might be what you want. Now let's do let's do one more here. Let's do. We started off with four. Let's do six. Let's see what happens with six. So smooth object. So that radius becomes even larger. Right, it's almost like a six inch radius. So all the corners now are radius all the way around, including the front, including the top. So if I did a smooth more, again, up to three times. Right, that's also a very different shape, right? It's much, much more smoother than it was before, right? So if I was to go any further than six inches, because this, the width of this shape was about six inches to be going. So if I went too much, it would start to distort the shape, right? So probably I would say that would be the limit. Like you don't want to change that um, maximum maximum edge length to more than what the width of the object that you're trying to smooth is, right? So I can do the same thing for this object here, smooth object, right? and it will smooth in that as well. And I could, again, smooth more, get it even smoother, right? Get those facets out of the way by smoothening it all the way, right? So it definitely softens that object, okay? Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is also, um, it has to do with smoothing, but it has to do with smoothing in terms of having some, a little bit of control, right? When we change that, um, maximum edge dif distance here, that affects the object globally, okay? So if I was to do that with uh, these uh, these blocks here, uh, let's change this back to four for a second, uh, just because that'll be easier to see. If I try to smooth object this, we have an object looks like this, right? We kind of shortened the, the, the maximum edge length, and it kind of rounded it off. It's smoothing it out a little bit. We can also change that. Let's change that again. Uh, let's change that to six, see what happens. Oh, I did it once, so I, I can't re-smooth an object that's been smoothed before, right? It's not gonna, I have to undo it back to the original shape. So make sure I change this. Oh. I drag this out by accident. Let's change the tessellation to uh, six again. Smooth object, right? And there we go, right? So it smoothens that shape out. Now, it's still very blocky, right? But let's say I wanted to make it even, you know, uh, rounded. So what we said before, we could kind of change this. Oh, gotta undo this back to the way it was. Let's do this and change this to, let's do a number of like 12, okay? Let's try that. And let's move in this. So you can see what's happening, right? Like, it doesn't seem like it's changing much with this object, okay? It's still rounding it, but it's not rounding it and it's not affecting it when I change that maximum edge difference the way it was working with these sort of unusual shapes, what I'll say, right? These are just regular primitive shapes. What we can do here is we can still change the way that looks, but we have to modify it a little bit differently, right? So we're gonna go to, again, mesh tessellation options. We're gonna go here where it says mesh primitives solids. These blocks that I drew are primitives. They're just basic blocks, right? They're called primitives. The other shapes that I was trying to do use, they weren't primitives, they were unusual shapes. So here under mesh primitives, we're gonna click on that. And here we're gonna click on box. And tessellation 
divisions. That's basically the number of divisions we want to have on each surface, length, width, and height. So right now, by default, it was set to 24. So let's go to like a number like one. Uh, let's do two, right? One, we're going to start getting some funky things happening. Let's do two. Let's do okay. So you can see now each surface is divided into two segments, right? It's four faces. All right. Click OK and OK again. And now if I apply a smooth object to this primitive and hit enter, you see we have that shape, right? So it rounds it much more than what it was before. And it has a great more effect on it. And I could smooth mesh again until it gets that. Um, it gets to be that shape, right? Now, let's say we go back to mesh tessellation and we go back to mesh primitives. And let's say we change this to, let's say, six for the length and for the width, right? So now what we have is six divisions per side, okay? Six divisions per side, many, many more faces. If I click OK, click OK, and then apply a smooth object to this, we have that shape, right? So we can control how much rounding or smoothing we have in a, on a primitive changing the number of faces. And in this case, we've changed the number of faces on all the sides, top, bottom, sides, and the front and back, right? The same way. Now let's say for this object, we're gonna come back to mesh isolation, mesh primitives. And let's say on the length, we change that to two, let's say the width we leave at six, and let's say the height we change to 12. Now you can see that every side is divided differently based on the number of divisions. So we'll click OK and OK again and apply a smooth object to this primitive. Hit enter. And now you can see that that shape is very different. Let's change this view to shades with edges so you can see the divisions, right? So here we had two divisions on each side. Here we had six divisions on each side. Here we had two divisions on one side on this, in this direction, six in this direction, and 12 in this direction. And you can see that shape is very different, right? So let's, let's add some more smoothness to some of these and let's see how that looks, right? So let's do this again up to three times. You could smoothen it. And once you exceed it, it'll tell you. You can see that the shape is very different than that one, okay? Now let's do this one and let's change these numbers again. Again, go to mesh, mesh primitives and let's change this. This is to, uh, let's say, let's keep that two, six and two for the height. Okay. And then again, you can see the way that different, right? The number of divisions. Click okay, click okay. Apply a smooth object here. And you can see how that is very different. And let's add some more smoothness here. Again, up to three times, right? And so you can see how that shape is very different than the previous other three shapes. It's by changing the number of faces, okay? Let's do it one last time since I have one last primitive here. Let's change this to, let's change this to two and let's change this to six sort of, and let's maybe make height four, okay? So that's also a different configuration in terms of its division, click OK, click OK, and do a smooth object to this, and let's smooth that some more. And you can see that is a very different shape than some of these other ones. It's similar, this one, but you can see that the rounding is a little bit different here, right? So depending on what you would like, you can change the smoothness of the object you could change how it smooths in the various surfaces by changing the number of uh, visions for each plane of the object, especially for primitives, primitives like box, pyramids, uh, cylinders, and things like that. For unusual shapes that are not primitive, meaning simple shapes, even though these are fairly simple, um, they are not primitives, you would have to make those adjustments using the maximum edge distance, 
Okay, so that is smooth objects. Um, and that is how we use, um, as the command that we use to smoothen some objects so that they appear less blocky and also change the way look and feel of, of what it is that we're modeling, right? So these are all primitives and with some slight adjustments, they look uh, very different, okay?